Life's too short for petty squabbles, but they sure do make for entertaining television. I gotta say, I don't like the way you're looking at me right now. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV feuds. It wasn't Stone Cold Steve Austin that screwed Vince McMahon, but it was Vince McMahon that screwed Vince McMahon. For this list, we're taking a look at states of conflict between two small screen characters that can't stand each other or flat out hate each other. Oh, you miserable bitch! <laughs> Whether these feuds are played for laughs or drama, it's a mess when these people are in the same room together. You can't play on my feelings. I don't have any. We've excluded animated feuds because they've already been represented on our list of the top 10 cartoon rivalries. My entire family is very touched and- Food fight! Number 10, Phil Dunphy versus Gil Thorpe, Modern Family. Prepare to fill the agony of done feet. Both names! This feud follows a classic sitcom trope with Phil Dunphy being the bumbling nice guy and Gil Thorpe being his slick, conceited nemesis. Oh, Dunphy, I can play you like a ukulele because you're small and dainty. As opposing real estate agents, Phil and Gil have been business rivals for years. History is full of great rivalries. Athens and Sparta, Kerrigan and Harding, Phil Dunphy and Gil Thorpe. In this scenario, he's the Tonya, I'm the Nancy. Their competition gets personal, however, when Gil crosses paths with a member of Phil's family. What do you want, Gil? I just want to make sure it's okay that your wife calls me boss. Goodbye. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm just messing with you. Although I do think your wife's going to enjoy being under me. Their opposition might sound familiar, but you can always count on Modern Family to put a fresh spin on an old concept with inspired twists witty dialogue, and great chemistry between some perfectly cast comedic actors. If you pass up on this, you're gonna regret it. I don't know the meaning of the word regret. Here we go, French toast, double bacon, egg white stray toast. Damn it. Number nine, Francis J. Frank Underwood versus Raymond Tusk, House of Cards. Mr. Vice President, normally I would ignore your call, but I am in a good mood today. Not even you could ruin it. While Frank Underwood is one of the craftiest anti-heroes ever to grace the small screen, House of Cards would get really boring if he were the only snake in the White House's garden. The president is like a lone tree in an empty field. He leans whichever way the wind is blowing, and right now Raymond Tusk blows far too strong from the west. Frank finds a worthy adversary in Raymond Tusk, a billionaire with a strong grip on President Garrett Walker. Wonderful. Come on in. If Frank is going to move up the ladder, he'll have to knock Tusk down a peg. I don't blame you for being two-faced, Raymond. It's good politics, as long as you don't get caught at it. Now, Frank, if you think that I... It's okay, Raymond. Jesus forgives you. Frank and Raymond's tug-of-war over the president is practically Shakespearean. Both men equally cunning in their pursuits of power. You cannot bully your way back to the table, Raymond, just as you cannot buy the keys to Congress. Best of luck keeping your majority in the House. I know how much it means to you. Number eight, Dexter Morgan versus James Dokes, Dexter. Where the hell you been? Crime scene? Surrounded by mostly oblivious co-workers, the only person who sees there's something darker behind Dexter Morgan's mild-mannered exterior is Sergeant James Dokes. You give me a fucking creep, you know that, Dexter? <laughs> yeah, I know, sorry about that. Although we should root for the cop to catch the serial killer, the audience oddly sympathizes with both men. Practice, practice, practice. Lane's open till midnight. You want to join me? One's trying to live with his dark passenger, and the other's just upholding the law. I ordered some furniture from Thailand. I was waiting for it to be delivered. As Dokes gets closer to the truth, though, it becomes clear that one of them will have to go down. You're connected to this. I don't know how, but I'm going to find out, and some of what I find is going to stick to your ass. Given a difficult choice, we can't help but hope Dexter is the last man standing. Doke said I had two choices, kill him or let him go. But he neglected to look behind door number three, hand him over to the FBI, gift-wrapped. Number seven, Alicia Florick versus Will Gardner, the good wife. Will. 
Alicia. Hey. The relationship between these lawyers goes through a number of status updates over the years. One season, they're co-workers, the next they're lovers, and then they're rivals. Will, you were suspended because of this kind of nonsense. Get her the files or be sanctioned. Having helped the unemployable Alicia get back on her feet, Will is infuriated when she steals his clients to start her own firm. Diane discovered Alicia was planning to leave with Cariagos and several of our top clients. Which clients? We're trying to find out now. All those in favor of relieving Alicia Florek of her duties. Feelings are tested, sides are picked, and practically everything is fair game now. This was never meant personally. I don't give a damn. However, buried under all that bitterness, Will and Alicia still care for one another. Thanks. Hey, we might have our differences, but you're the better lawyer. <laughs> I am, aren't I? <laughs> Any hope for Will Leisha is gunned down, however, one tragic day in court. He needs help. <laughs> Paramedics! Number six, Sheldon Cooper versus Barry Kripke, The Big Bang Theory. We accept your challenge. Name a time and place. Tomorrow, three o'clock, the kinetics web. Make it so. You'd expect somebody as nerdy as Sheldon Cooper to get regularly picked on. What would you say to the idea of you and I becoming friends? I would say, I have no interest in becoming your friend. You wouldn't expect a fellow nerd with a speech impediment to be the source of that criticism. Thank you, Kripke, for depriving me of the opportunity to share my news with my friends. My pleasure. <laughs> Barry Kripke doesn't let his disability stand in the way of him being consistently cocky, especially when around Sheldon. Well, if you have any delusions about entering him against my robot, the Kripke Quippler, in the Southern California Robot Fighting League Round Robin Invitational, a.k.a. the SCRFLROI, his name is going to be Squat Metal. Although both are highly intelligent, Kripke is definitely more quick-witted than Sheldon when it comes to put-downs and pranks. I'm on an expedition to the Arctic Circle in search of said particles. Kripke, I found the nozzle. I'm going to kill you. Whether they're in competition or forced to work together, the two are bound to make a big bang. Right here we have a micro-controlled plasma. <laughs> Number five, Rick Grimes versus the governor, The Walking Dead. I thought you were a cop, not a lawyer. Either way, I don't pretend to be a governor. If The Walking Dead has taught us anything, it's that you should never trust anybody during a Walker apocalypse. His servants are the false apostles of righteousness. They don't deserve this. They don't deserve paradise. Thank you, Gabriel. Rick's group should have run for the hills upon meeting the governor who oversees a prison disguised as a human civilization camp. Although he looks like a charmer at first, this sadistic tyrant has skeletons and zombies in his closet, literally. And now you're gonna die. <laughs> and you're gonna turn. And you're gonna tear the flesh from her bone. <laughs> As he sinks deeper into insanity, Rick needs to rise up and lead his people to safety. With the governor on his trail, the undead become the least of Rick's worries. Restitution for your own lack of insight. For failing to see the devil beside you. Oh, I see him all right. Number four, Walter White versus Gustavo Gus Fring, Breaking Bad. Well, get back to work. Walt and Gus could have shared a prosperous partnership and friendship. After a <clears throat> disagreement, though, the two become mortal enemies. Isn't it obvious to you what Gus is planning? He's going to use you to replace me. As both are incredibly sneaky, you're never sure what either of these men is going to do next. Every time it seems that Walt has the upper hand, it turns out Gus is a step ahead. Gus! He has, he has been ten steps ahead of me at every turn. All we know is that one will eventually be king of the castle, and the other will be exposed as a two-faced monster. See what we did there? <laughs> Their rivalry made season four of Breaking Bad nothing short of exhilarating. You're damn right. Gus had to go. Number three. 
Drew Allison Carey versus Mimi Bobak, The Drew Carey Show. Oh, Drew. Oh, uh, Mimi. I thought I felt death nearby. Although Mimi wasn't originally intended to be a major part of The Drew Carey Show, she quickly became the title character's main antagonist. You're in really big trouble, you know that? I didn't come in here to be insulted by some crew-cut jerk who thinks this job is his own personal beauty contest. You're a pig! Mimi is constantly poking her nose into Drew's business, playing pranks on him and taking shots at his weight, despite the fact that she's no stick-thin model herself. You know... Separately, we're nothing. But together, we're 800 pounds of trouble. <laughs> All right, I'm in for 120. Loud, obnoxious, and wearing way too much makeup, Mimi is the last person you'd want to be office rivals with. No, there's no need to apologize. Hello, Miss Bobek. <laughs> Oh, what is that? Some old maid joke? Screw you! Go to hell! She is a hilarious comedic foil for Drew, nevertheless, showing little restraint in her venture to make him miserable. What are you bothering me for? Can't you get laid here either? Number two, Jerry Seinfeld versus Newman, Seinfeld. Hello, Jerry. Hello, oh, Newman. The way Jerry greets Newman every time he walks into his apartment sums up all the animosity these neighbors share for one another. There's no need to get excited. Can't we discuss this like gentlemen? No, we can't. My skin is crawling just being inside your little rat. <laughs> it's never been revealed how the two grew to despise each other so much. All we need to know is that nothing brings the slimy Newman more joy than causing trouble for Jerry. Toodaloo. <laughs> uh, nice seeing you again, Margaret. Bye, Jerry. Have fun. <laughs> Whether Jerry's cheating on his barber or making out during Schindler's List, you can bet Newman will be there to squeal on him. But I'm gonna have to spell it out for you. He was moving on her like the stormtroopers into Poland. Never has a feud been so trivial and yet so heated. That's a, a powerful film. Yes, shocking brutality, don't you think? Shocking. Yeah, well, that was nothing. <laughs> Before we go head to head with our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. There's one thing I learned from you, Jack. It's keep your friends close. And your enemy's so close that you're almost kissing. Bottom line, she needs I've the tip you procedure with insurance talks. or without I insurance. I can taste it. It's an old story, really. Good versus bad, right versus wrong, the dark side versus the light. I don't want to sue you. Good. I want to beat the crap out of you. Less good. And I'll tell you why. You're a bully. I have no interest in dating you, Sue. You're a bully and you're mean to kids. I'm mean to everyone! Yeah, well, fine. Consider this a little taste of what you love dishing out. I said drop it! Where's Kate? She's fine, just put down- I'm not putting down anything! Do you want him to die? Put it down! Number one, Dwight Schrute versus Jim Halpert, The Office. You put my stuff in jello again. Although Jim and Dwight are full-grown men in a professional workplace, their ongoing feud is more like something from a playground. Seven out of ten attacks are from the rear. Okay, well that still leaves a 30% chance that I'll attack you from the front. Uh, yeah, but it'll be easier to stop. I can always block the blow, or I can counter it, but... Too cool for school, the laid-back Jim has played numerous inventive pranks on Dwight, some simple and others extravagant. If I can skin a mule deer in less than ten minutes, I ought to be able to cut my... Unable to take a joke, Dwight never misses an opportunity to tattle on Jim to Michael. Everyone has called me Dwayne all day. I think Jim Halpert paid them to. <laughs> yes, five bucks each, and it was totally worth it. As much as these co-workers drive each other crazy, though, they do share some degree of respect and fondness for one another. At least that's more than can be said about Michael and Toby. Oh no! No, God, please, no, 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 no! Do you agree with our list? Tell me, tell me! Ooh, chunkies. What TV characters do you enjoy watching argue? Can it, you two, I'm here on business. For more top tens that are sure to start feuds in the comments section every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. If you're not there, you'll be exposed to ridicule.